Hey guys, it's me, your boy Ryan Swag here. So, Calgary's been out for a couple days now. Maybe you had a chance to fight that Blizzard move set. If you're having a rough time, maybe you could use some of these Blizzard tips. Aww. If you got Blizzard problems, I got five simple interventions for you. It's more like four simple interventions. The the last one's a bit a bit complicated. Tip number one. Tip number one is leading with Executor. Solar Beam Executor. Now you might be thinking, Ryan Swag, I, I Blizzard Kyogre, the Executor is going to faint before it gets off the Solar Beam. That's true. At most parts of the fight, that will probably happen to you. However, at the very beginning of the fight, Kyogre is most likely going to use four or more fast moves before its charge move. That means you will reliably, or I guess more reliably than usually, be able to get off a solar beam successfully. Intervention number two, use glass cannons. Well, if you switch over to Poke Battler here, you go to the Kyogre counters, you can sort them by time to win, and the time to win options are gonna be the high DPS options, generally. And you sort the unknown move sets to Waterfall and Blizzard, and then it'll list the high DPS options for you. So of course we got Raikou up in front, and we've got Groudon, which I rep, and Sceptile, which I rep. I didn't rep Mewtwo on the face of the graph like I explained in my Kyogre counter video. If you haven't watched that video yet, the link is in the description. But yeah, Mewtwo, also a good option here. And then you got the Glass Cannons. So bringing in Zapdos, bringing in Jolteon, and bringing in Victory Bell, uh, those could be very potent options for you for your Kyogre team. For Zapdos, you're going to want to have Thunderbolt. For Jolteon, you can do Thunderbolt or Discharge. And then Victory Bell, you're going to have that Leaf Blade. Now, Poke Babbler does list Venusaur and Executor, but Venusaur and Executor are operating on averages here, which means that it's averaging when the Solar Beam wins and when the Solar Beam loses. After the first Pokemon in the fight, the Solar Beam is probably going to lose more often than not. So if you're lacking these top Pokemon, you might want to shift down to these guys here, which is Manetric with Wild Charge, Magneton with Discharge, and Shift Tree with Leaf Blade. Now, let's say you're, you're going down in the barrel a bit further, or you want some ideas for your B team, uh, you know, your second switch in team using the battle parties. Intervention number 2.5 uh, make a battle party so you can switch in with good Pokemon faster. Uh, small aside, Cloyster is worse than Blissey, and for whatever reason, the auto selector will try to select Cloyster. So, uh, get that get that B team set up in your battle parties. So, if you're looking for options beyond these, sinking down a bit more, Wild Charge Arcanine steps up a bit. I know weird weird pick, kind of weird. Uh, Seed Bomb Breloom, and if you got a Wild Charge Raichu, then this might be a good place to use it and then you're gonna see ho -Oh here and you're like well ryan swag you put that in your graphic you're, you're telling us to use ho -Oh. yeah that's because ho's particularly tanky and it's got good dps right now poke Battler is sorting them by dps specifically there's no total damage output involved in this particular numerical ranking right and another interesting thing is you see machamp and hariyama here while they're not the best DPS options, if you've got like a, a Fight Club team for uh, beating down Blissies and Snorlaxes, and it's cloudy outside, these guys might be very good to switch in for the fight when it's cloudy outside. Now, if you're just uncertain or you don't have a lot of high level Pokemon or powered up Pokemon in general, uh, if you do have level 20 Raikos and Zapdoses with uh, Wild Charge or Thunderbolt, uh, you know, even Raikou with Thunderbolt at level 20, uh, they're pretty good for a last-ditch effort B team. Well, let me tell you, even even at level 20, as long as they've got uh, Wild Charge or Thunderbolt, then that might serve you better than Cloyster. Tip number three, pull out early. What I mean is, is if you're on your sixth Pokemon, and you feel like Blizzard is going to come up soon or, or it's starting to do the Blizzard animation, it might be a good idea to push that little run guy button and pull yourself out of the fight rather than faint out of the fight. Now what that does for you is it gives you a slight time benefit, which decreases the, uh, the gap in the amount of time that you're not doing any damage 
which can increase your DPS and your total damage output for the fight, which can help out your bonus balls. And on top of that, people, you know, I don't like waiting around. And it can also save your revive. So a simple intervention, just a light tip. You don't have to use it. You can faint out. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is a, it is a gain, a small gain. It is a gain. Simple tip there, right? I'm not complex tip. That's tip number five. All right. Easy tip. Tip number three. Tip number four. Assuming that you followed tip number 2.5 and you have a B team already set up in your battle parties, you're going to want to lead that B team with a tankier Pokemon. Two particularly tanky recommendations are Ho-Oh and Ludicolo. An alternative tanky Pokemon that is also good specifically for the Blizzard fight is Lantern. Trust me. Lantern's good for this. Now the reason why you want to lead your B team with this tankier Pokemon is because when you switch back into the fight, you don't know where the raid boss is. I told you guys early on that on average it will use four fast moves before using the blizzard, right? You don't know where it is on that fast move scale. You could switch back into the fight and just face tank a blizzard right away. Fainting whatever Pokemon you're gonna have, you know, be a rock star there. But if you throw in a tankier Pokemon, a Pokemon that can tank a blizzard, a bunch of fast moves, and then tank another blizzard and faint on that, then not only will it increase their DPS, but it'll also like not upset your flow. You know what I'm saying? So there's nothing but like benefits to be gained from having that tankier Pokemon in the lead slot. Once again, who I'm repping for this is Ho-Oh, Ludicolo, and Lantern. Now the thing you want to keep in mind about these Pokemon is that you're going to want to have them powered up a bit. Uh, Ludicolo is actually most optimal at level 35.5, meeting its offensive breakpoint. Description for a breakpoint calculator and a guide on what breakpoints are, if you don't know what a breakpoint is. Ho-Oh is going to operate best at level 33 or higher, also a breakpoint. Lantern? Lantern, you can do a little bit more leeway. Like, I think a, a wild-caught level 31 is, is just fine. So, but if you want to get specific about it, you can look into its breakpoints. If you know about bulk points, also link in the description with the bulk point counter in the uh, description, right? Uh, then you can optimize it for that however you want to. You might be dissing Ludicolo and uh, Lantern for this fight because they got the lower DPS, but their tankiness is really useful for this. And because they'll likely be tanking an early blizzard, it it really does boost their DPS a bit. Also, it's worth noting that uh, if you caught your Hundo Kyogre right away and you already maxed it out and you just so happen to still have Thunder on it, then that is also a good tanky option. I, I do have to say that Kyogre is a little bit more questionable unless you have it past the Waterfall Breakpoint. And I don't have the Waterfall Breakpoint readily memorized. If you use the Breakpoint Calculator in the description, uh, you'll be able to pinpoint it instantly. So time for the uh, the fifth tip, uh, kind of a convoluted one. So basically, a bulk point is the level at which your Pokemon will be able to survive a specific amount of fast moves and one charge move with uh, at least one HP. What that means is uh, you can tank like three waterfalls and then a blizzard and you'll still be alive to retaliate with your own charge move and then you faint on the next fast move. So that sounds cool, that sounds great. However, there is a danger to this. It's not so good for glass cannons. The reason why it's not so good for glass cannons is because your bulk point Pokemon will faint on a fast move. That means that the blizzard is gonna come for the next Pokemon that switches in sooner than usual. If you're kinda confused, like why would it come sooner? Well, that's because the average is four waterfalls before the blizzard. If that's the average, then you fainted on number one. That means the Pokemon that just came in has only three more on average. So it could come even earlier for them. For all you know, if you follow up with a glass cannon behind your bulk point Pokemon, it could jump in and just face tank a blizzard instantaneously. It happened to me. So we're looking at this as my Raikou Black Dynamite. It's one fast move. Two fast moves. Oh, here comes Blizzard, right? Not average. I survived it according to plan. Survived another one because I can tank three. And I fainted on the second fast move after Blizzard. 
You can see here, my Zapdos tanks the third one, and oh, oh, what a chump. So like I said, four fast moves is the average. That means that the Blizzard can come sooner. That means the Blizzard can come later. But if you got this bulk point specific Pokemon, such as that Raikou I showed you, that can survive three fast moves in a Blizzard, which it did, uh, then the Glass Cannon that came after it, my Zapdos, took a Blizzard way earlier than usual, and it wasn't able to get nearly as much damage off as it would have been able to otherwise. So I'm not saying don't use bulk point specific Pokemon, and I'm not saying don't use Glass Cannons, I'm just saying keep them separated. You want to have those Glass Cannon Pokemon in front of the bulk point specific Pokemon. And if you do need to blend them, or if you want to like use your Raikou or your Mewtwo or your Groudon ahead of your Glass Cannons, then maybe like putting a little buffer of like a tanky Pokemon, such as the Ho-Oh, the Ludicolo, or the Lantern, could help reset the charge move use for the Glass Cannon. So a little convoluted, a little complicated, but you know, you don't want to be a chump like me and uh, have your Zapdos faint instantly. Oh, that wasn't so cool, was it? No, it wasn't. So, learn from my failures. Conversely, if you have a bulk point specific Pokemon, follow a bulk point Pokemon, then that kind of potentiates them to survive better in the way that you want them to as a bulk point Pokemon. Now, what I mean is, is that, uh, you know, the average is four and you faint on that, on that first fast move, right? So then it's got three more until it does the average blizzard. Well, for against blizzard, a lot of the bulk point specific Pokemon can only survive three fast moves in a blizzard. So now the average is on their favorite number three. So yeah, so if you line up your Raikou and then you have your Mewtwo follow it or your Groudon follow it or your other Raikos follow it, assuming you're using those guys, uh, then that can, that can help them out. That can help them out. But if you have a glass cannon directly behind these guys, then you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna be a chump like me and have your Zapdos faint instantly. Five simple interventions that can help you go up against Blizzard Kyogre that much better. Uh, to review, tip number one, leading with Executor with that solar beam because you're most likely to get your solar beam off at the very beginning of the fight. Tip number two was just going over the glass cannon Pokemon and I guess Tip 2.5, uh, making sure you set up that B team, you know, in your battle parties so you can quickly switch to it because Cloyster is garbage and the auto selector is garbage. Tip number three, the pull out early. Tip number four was to have your, your B team, you know, your team number two switching out after you faint, right? To have that team lead with a tanky Pokemon such as a powered up Ho-Oh or a powered up Ludicolo or a level 30 Lantern is good, or, or a powered up Kyogre, if you, if you already did that. That could help out because when they switch in, they can handle face tanking a Blizzard right away. You don't know when that Blizzard's gonna come when you switch back in. And then tip number five, you know about bulk points and you're using a bulk point specific Pokemon such as Raikou, Mewtwo, or Groudon in this fight, you don't wanna have a glass cannon right behind them because it could potentially weaken the glass cannon by virtue of making them eat a blizzard sooner than later uh, which could make them do like no damage so uh, just be mindful four simple interventions one kind of complicated intervention to help you fight against blizzard like comment and subscribe Oh, look at that loser.